because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, the widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah, thus say the word of the Lord. Lord, our prayer is that you would think with our mind, speak with our mouth, use your word that it will go forth and meet the needs of this waiting congregation. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want you to get excited. I want you to get excited. Amen. Because of what the Lord is doing. I, every time I read this portion of scripture, tears begin to come to my eyes. Because I begin to see something deeper in the content of this lesson that the Lord is declaring. Amen. For the lives of his people, even for such a time as this. I need to speak to someone that might be in a dry season even now. Someone that has felt abandoned. Someone that felt that uh, they had no way of coming out of this. I hear the Lord saying, get ready. Get ready. Amen. And so when I looked at this, I began to see some things taking place. And I thought, amen, that we need to encourage one another with a voice of enthusiasm and excitement. Amen. Get ready for the overflow. Amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready for my overflow. Come on, come on. Tell somebody, I'm getting ready for my overflow. How many of you know your servant God has more than enough? So therefore, get ready because he's not going to give you enough, but he's going to give you more than you can handle. Amen. I'm getting ready for my overflow. As I, amen, look at the powerful word out of this powerful pericope, I began to understand God moving in a very awesome way. He allows a situation and I all time talk about revelation from the Lord. In order sometimes for us to gain revelation, God has to sometime create a situation so that we can gain revelation out of that situation. Now here it seems to be a strange story of a young woman that had already made up her mind that she and her son was going to eat their last meal and die. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh my, eat their last meal and die. Now for you to understand her to use such words, you must understand the content of the story. What was happening is that the man of God had already pronounced that the rain would be held up until it was declared to fall. And for now over three years the rain had not fallen. Crops had dried up. Yeah. Amen. Books had dried up. Oh, yeah. Food that was began to wither away. Yeah. You need to get a clear picture of what was going on. Here's a young lady with her young son. The word already let us know that her husband was not around. For death was in the air. Wherever they stepped, there was a man stepping over 
dead bodies. For folk were dying in the streets. Cattle were dying. Livestock was dying. So in other words, there was a stench of death in the air. And it seemed as if there was no way out of this. The woman watched this. She knew she was dying, but she said, I want to die with a little dignity. So here's a woman without much strength. She gathers her little boy and she grabs herself a shovel and she goes out into the soil and said, this is going to be our burial plot. And she begins to dig in the soil a hole deep enough that would cover her and her son's body. She began to dig one for her and she began right beside her to dig one for him. And she said to him, if I should go first, let me die with a little dignity. Put the dirt over me so that the birds of the air do not devour my body as they have been eating off of the flesh of every other corpse that was lying around. You have to see death was around her. No help was anywhere. And she had nothing left in her cupboard but a handful of flour and just a few drops of oil. Oh God. She began to say, God, give me strength to dig this hole so that the animals do not devour this body and my son. That we're going to die here in dignity and we're going to sit next to this hole because there's no life.